Gordon Waite here again. I'm working on this 25 inch mirror blank. It's 25 inch, it started out 2 inches thick, but I've reduced it in thickness to about uh, somewhere between an inch and 5 eighths and an inch and 3 quarters. And uh, I did the initial uh, reduction with an angle grinder. I actually uh, kind of arted it out by hand. <laughs> I just used a plain old angle grinder. I used a diamond tool on the end of it. This is diamond blade. And I did, uh, did this basically by hand. I worked outside on a power turntable and uh, used a dust mask, obviously, and uh, basically wet the surface down, kept water running on it, uh, let it spin around, and I used the angle grinder on it to remove a bunch of glass off the back. And the reason I do it that way, it's very fast. The diamond uh, took it off in about oh, two hours, two and a half hours of work. I removed about a quarter of an inch off the edge. So it's very quick to do that. But of course, freehanding it like that, I was left with a surface that isn't particularly flat. So now I'm back in the shop and I've got this on a regular grinding table. And I'm, I've been using regular loose abrasives, silicon carbide abrasives, and a steel nut grinding tool in dental plaster to start to flatten the back, or not start to flatten it, but to, you know, to, to work this until it's actually good and flat. So right now I, I did uh, several sessions on it with number 24 silicon carbide which is pretty much gravel. <laughs> it's very, very uh, coarse abrasive. And when I got close, I stopped doing that. I didn't want to, you know, use that any longer than I have to. And I did some sessions with number 40. And I'm going to do one last session with number 40 here uh, on the fixed post grinding machine before I move on to the finer abrasives. Now, if you look at this, it's actually pretty flat, except for a few spots. There's a ring right here that you can see by its rougher nature. You can see this is uh, what's left after 24 abrasive, where the smoother part of it looks like the number 40 abrasive, which is much finer. So there's a ring here I need to get rid of. There's a little bit of roughness out around this, the 60 or 70 percent zone there. And then the very edge of the mirror hasn't been touched off yet. I can still see the marks from the, actually from the grinder there, the, the diamond grinder. So uh, the edge of it has quite a little bit to go yet. So I'm going to work another session of number 40 abrasive on this loose abrasive with the steel tool on the fixed post machine. I want to show you how I do that. Uh, first step here, I've got the tool soaking over there so it's moist. And my first step is just to wet this down. And I'm going to throw some uh, abrasive on there. So this, is, this is just number 40 silicon carbide abrasive. Normal sort of stuff you'd use for any sort of mirror grinding. Obviously number 40 is pretty coarse stuff. Most people who do mirror grinding don't get exposed to much coarser than about number 80. But uh, I use 24, 40, and 60 as well uh, because I quite often do heavy duty projects like this where I actually need quite a bit of glass removal. Uh, we also specialize here in ultra fast mirrors. This, for example, is going to be an F3.1 mirror. So when you cut a curve that steep, you, there's a lot of uh, glass to be removed and sometimes you just have to use a little more harsh abrasive. So the 24, the 40, and the 60 are abrasive grades that I use quite often. Uh, I like to apply the abrasive with the turntable running. It just helps to distribute it around a little bit, makes it a little, little easier. When you've got a mirror that's this big, it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not like you're doing it 8 inch and everything's right there. You actually have to cover quite a little bit of area. So I've got that abrasive on there. Now it's time to get the tool going. So I've got this 16 and a half inch grinding tool, steel nuts, and that's going on top. And I like to move it around uh, just to make sure the abrasive is distributed kind of evenly. Okay, now we'll put some weight on there. Twenty-five pounds. That'll be enough for now. now. I've already set this up with the overhang that I want. So I move that out there. And then I have this... And I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to put this steel bar over the mirror. Normally I would never hold this over the mirror anywhere. But I wanted you to see it. This is just a stainless steel bar, 5 8 inch in diameter. And it goes down in through the hole in the overarm and locks down into the back of this grinding tool. 
Now that holds that grinding tool in place. When the mirror spins up on the turntable, the friction between the two will spin this tool. And the differential rotation is what does the grinding action here. So I'm ready to go on this. And uh, basically, I run this up to about, uh, on a mirror this big, about 45 RPMs, I suppose. And uh, let her grind. And the trick to it is, you keep adding abrasive and cleaning the, the swarf off it. And you want to hear that howling, grinding sound. If it's not howling, it's not grinding. So I use a fair bit abrasive. It breaks down pretty fast. And I just wipe it away with a sponge when it builds up too much swarf. The swarf is the uh, broken abrasive and the chips of glass. So we're ready to fire up here. Now, what you might have noticed when I put on abrasive there is I put it on and I, I put it on from the center out to the edge, but I don't go all the way to the outside. Uh, if this was turning at 60 RPMs, this two foot diameter mirror would have about, you know, six feet per second speed on the outside. If you drop abrasive out there, it just gets flung off into space and doesn't really get used. So I kind of distribute the abrasive in here and the, that force will help spread it out to the edge. You can see that there is actually abrasive out there. But you can see on the inside here the broken uh, abrasive and the broken glass. And uh, normally I would keep doing this for oh, uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes and then every so often I use a little sponge and just take the swarf off. And I'll show you how I do that. This isn't really broken down enough but I'll do it just to give you a, a look at how I do it. Now you can see there that I, I hadn't been grinding very long, but I'm starting to generate quite a bit of swarf here. And uh, you saw I just uh, scooped along it and then rolled it over so that the swarf would come off on this. I have a great big water bucket that I clean this in so that I capture the, the broken bits there and don't uh, release them out in the environment. But uh, I'll wait until the swarf builds up pretty good, then do two or three swipes like that to get rid of most of it. And without ever turning the machine off, I just go ahead and add more abrasive on and keep going. So basically in that 20 or 30 minute session, the machine never turns off. And I just keep adding uh, the abrasive, the silicon carbide abrasive, lots and lots of water. And then when the grinding action gets too low because there's too much buildup on here, use the sponge to sponge a little off. One thing to be careful when you're using that sponge 
if you happen to lose hold of it, it's going to go flying off and you're going to lose it. Uh, it's not a catastrophe. The sponge isn't going to hurt anything and I've never had one get sucked under or anything like that. But it kind of startling when it ejects the sponge from the area. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's how I do this grinding. Like I said, I'll do 20 or 30 minutes, check my progress, clean it off, check it, see how I'm doing, make any adjustments that not, might be necessary. Uh, if I find I'm getting concave or convex, I move this tool either toward the center or away from the center. If the mirror is going convex, I move it toward the center. If the mirror is going concave, I move it away from the center. When you move it away, it moves the mass out and it works the edge more. So uh, that's how you adjust it to, to move toward flat. And I'll try to get this thing flat to better than a thousandth of an inch, and I'll grind the back down to probably uh, 320 or maybe even 25 micron. So that's how I'll work flattening the back of this 25 inch F3.1 mirror.